You know, it's funny how Nikola Tesla and Einstein spoke in detail about intuition and what it did for them in their works. And yet we hear almost nothing about intuition or even Nikola Tesla in school or anywhere else in our society. And we can all thank Tesla for literally 80% of all of our modern technology. It all results back to his inventions and his lifelong works and achievements. Yet there's almost a suppression of anything about Tesla within our school systems and our society as a whole. Tesla himself stated that intuition is what led to all of his achievements, that he would literally imagine things in his mind, all of his inventions, before he would ever do any practical work in a laboratory. And it's incredible to think that of all these amazing inventions that he came up with, he was able to do it in just his head. How do you explain that? Whereas you have Thomas Edison, who jokes about, oh, I found 10,000 ways not to do something. Now, real quick, let me correct myself from my prior video about Tesla, that Thomas Edison, he didn't invent the light bulb. He purchased the patent and then had his freaking interns go do all the work for him, and then he stamped his name on it at the end of it. He was not a brilliant inventor. He was a brilliant uh, marketer and a fraud. And I also mentioned that he failed to pay Tesla $10,000. Well, it turns out it's actually $50,000. And if you utilize an inflation calculator, you'll see that it equates to millions of dollars in today's money. Edison is a dirtbag. Now, to get back on the subject of intuition, many people from all different spectrums of industry fields and different periods of time throughout history have spoken about intuition, whether it be Oprah or Ralph Waldo Emerson or even Aristotle and many, many others. And it's interesting to mention that Aristotle was trained by Plato and Plato was trained by Socrates. Now, Socrates was an incredible influence on Steve Jobs. And Steve Jobs even stated that he would trade all of his technology for an afternoon with Socrates. And he wasn't joking. And you may not be aware of Steve Jobs' thoughts on intuition. For example, he stated, Intuition is a very powerful thing, more powerful than intellect, in my opinion, which is exactly what Einstein and Tesla said themselves. He also stated, Much of what I stumbled into by following my curiosity and intuition turned out to be priceless later on. And one last quote by him, he said, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. Here's another quote by Nikola Tesla. My brain is only a receiver. In the universe, there is a core from which we obtain knowledge, strength, and inspiration. I have not penetrated into the secrets of this core, but I know that it exists. Now, something that Tesla and Einstein both had in common were their thoughts on frequency and vibration and energy, that essentially they were describing what we now know are atoms. And when you study atoms, you learn that it's this mysterious energy that science cannot explain, yet it is the building blocks of everything that we have. But to further the discussion of frequency, we know that there's millions of colors that the human eye can't even register. They're just out of the frequency of our field of vision that the human eyes and the veil of the human eyes can register. However, take infrared as an example. You'll have these nature shows that go out in pitch black and set up these huge infrared lamps that to the naked eye look like they're just turned off. They're not doing anything. But when you use technology on the right frequency, it lights everything up like it's a stadium. So just because our human eyes can't see or understand something doesn't mean it's not there. We know this. I mean, even take, for example, our human body and all the different elements that it's made up of. You can't see the iron metal in your blood, but you sure can taste and smell it. And through science, we can detect that it is there, that literally your blood contains metal iron. <laughs> now, scientists will say, oh, well, that's it's trace amounts and it's measured in parts per million. It's practically negligible. Uh, really? So without iron in our blood, would you even be alive? No. So it's not negligible. It's a key ingredient. And what's even crazier is when you look into all the elements that our body's made up of, you see that we have copper, cobalt, and we're mostly made up of carbon, which is incredible. Yet we can go on. Our bodies, and I mentioned this in my other video about Tesla, that despite being coming from being made of dirt or stardust or whatever you want to call it, same thing in my, in my book, uh, we are able to create instruments from various elements, the dirt, the ground, metal, and yet these instruments can create music that we love. I mean, how do you explain music? Where does that fit into what we need for Strong to Survive or Evolution or anything like that? Where I also mentioned love before. Love has no place in how the workings of science claim that, you know, with our evolution and everything. There's, it's a missing link, and I firmly believe that laughter, love, music are all examples of the quote-unquote, I'm going to call it divinity, or that our body is essentially the earth and our mind is the source of all things, that we're connected to it, and it's evidence of it. Let me touch on humor. 
we'll agree that humor is, varies culturally, right? That what's funny on one side of the country or one side of the world will differ and people won't find certain things funny throughout the world is that they'll find funny in their own culture. But yet something that's universally funny almost in every culture around the world is when somebody trips and falls and eats it, you know, on a flat surface and assuming that they're not hurt. But people will laugh at that. People will laugh at themselves from tripping and falling and others will laugh at them. And I think that it is evidence of our subconscious that's tied to the universe that our bodies are essentially our consciousness occupies our bodies like an avatar, a robot, whatever you want to call it. Don't take those words too literally. Um, but I do think that we, our body is a vessel or vehicle of some kind and that it's a subconscious humor that when we see ourselves mess up something stupid like just tripping and falling, it's funny. Yet, How do you explain that? Why is that funny? And what is funny? What is humor? What is that? When you really think about it, it's pretty interesting and it's pretty mind-blowing. And in my opinion, it's evidence of that there's something going on beyond the veil of our eyes. This ties into another quote by Tesla. Every living being is an engine geared to the wheelwork of the universe. Though seemingly affected only by its immediate surrounding, the sphere of external influence extends to infinite distance. So let me explain this in an analogy that I made up. An octopus, one of the smartest creatures on planet Earth. Its brain isn't just centrally located in its head, but in fact, eight of its tentacles, all eight of its tentacles, have the brain stem and nerve, and essentially every single leg tentacle can operate individually by itself all at the same time. Every single suction cup, and they have hundreds of them, which is pretty incredible considering that most humans can't even juggle, right? Yet octopus can utilize this intelligence to squeeze through a one inch diameter hole despite being a giant octopus. Or even take this picture in the lower, lower right corner of that small little rectangular hole that that octopus is able to squeeze out of. And it's not just because it doesn't have bones in its body, it's because it's able to maneuver every single piece of its body all at the same time. Now, I theorize that this analogy is sort of like the works of the universe, that we our consciousness, that there is a one consciousness that we are all tied to, and that we're just a small piece of it. We're a piece of the tentacle, so to speak, of the will work of the universe that Tesla spoke about. Let me give you another example of this universal intelligence. We can find it in nature. If you're not familiar with the Fibonacci sequence of numbers, or they're also called golden ratios, you can see that there are patterns found throughout nature, whether in trees and how they grow and how they stem off, or in bushes or in various fruits and vegetables. And you can find examples of this everywhere in that there's certain ratios and certain number patterns that clearly show that there is some sort of intelligence behind nature and that everything isn't just random and that things just nature just is chaotic and just work on itself that clearly they show. And if you go testing this for yourself and go out in nature and look at the trees and the bushes, you will see for yourself that, holy crap, there's a pattern and that there's an intelligence behind this pattern. There's no other way. But I think that another example of this universal intelligence and that evidence that we are literally tied to a one consciousness is the subject of synchronicity. Now, Carl Jung is considered the father of analytic psychology, and he's the one that coined the term synchronicity. And it's something that he explored in depth through the latter part of his life. Now, one example of this is where he had a client on his couch in his office, and she was explaining a dream she had the night before of where she received a, gold, a golden cherub necklace. And at that exact moment, a golden uh, roach of some kind, beetle, whatever you call a cherub, started pinning at the window right behind him on there on the second floor. And it was incredible the timing because one, he had never seen an insect like that at his office ever before. And it happened at that precise timing. Another example of this is on the one year anniversary of 9-11. The New York lottery had their pick three. And are you aware that in 9-11-2002, the three numbers that came up was 9 -1 -1. For real, that actually happened and there was more than 1,500 winners. Another crazy example of synchronicity involves a French poet in the 1800s where he had purchased plum pudding for the first time from a street vendor, and he, he loved it. Now, fast forward 10 years later, he's in a restaurant and he sees that they have plum pudding on the menu. And he's like, oh my God, I'm going to order that. Well, when he tells the server that he was going to order the plum pudding, he, the server informed him that, oh, we're sorry, the last order, order had just been sold to the gentleman at the table next to you. Is there something else we can get you? Well, he looks over and he sees that the guy who ordered the last plum pudding was the same exact street vendor that served him the plum pudding the very first time. Crazy, right? Now, fast forward 17 years later, the same gentleman's in a restaurant with some friends and he's looking at the dessert menu. He's like, oh my God, they have plum pudding. And it reminds him of that story. So he starts telling the story to his buddies. And at that, that exact moment, the same street vendor who's now old and senile walks in through the front door at that exact moment. 
Like, what are the odds of that? Now, I've had my own miraculous moments of synchronicity in my life. And I could, I could sit here and share them with you, but it's like, look, seeing is believing. You need to see things for yourself. If you're not familiar with synchronicity, all you have to do is open your mind to the same frequency, to the right frequency, and you'll be able to see these things for yourself. It's amazing what you can do if you just ask the universe for something. I'm not kidding. Your words have power. Say it out loud. Universe, send me signs and synchronicities to show me that there's crazy things happening behind the scenes. Word it any way you want. Say, I am going to see synchronicities. Carl Jung, one thing that he discovered, even though he couldn't figure out what synchronicities were, was that the more that you pay attention to them, the more that you become aware of synchronicities, the more that they will happen in your life. And I have seen synchronistic moments that were so miraculous and that they would double down in the exact moment afterwards, even when your jaw is already dropped, that they are firsthand miracles to prove to you firsthand that there is crazy things happening in this universe. And it all ties back into intuition. All of these things, the real works of the universe, your consciousness is literally dialed into the universal energies out there. Your body is the earth. Your mind is of the source, guys. Tesla figured this out. That's how he was able to create so many incredible inventions with just his brain. And there's other examples of this too. Take, for example, near-death experiences, which I'm going to do a video on uh, at some point where there's, being, there's studies being done involving thousands of people that were medically verified to have died on the operating table, heart stop, brain dead, and yet they come back miraculously. But yet when they come back, they're able to share things and experiences that they had that weren't possible being brain dead, that they exceed the realm of just being a dream while they're between consciousness. Where there's, I mean, there's one example where this lady had bled out on the operating table. She comes back miraculously, and while she was dead, she met her grandfather who had died when she was a kid, who was a doctor. And he said, hey, look, you, tell them when you wake up that you have three infections, one of which is in your pancreas. Tell them. So she wakes up just blurting out how she has this infection and she saw her grandfather. Like, what? Long story short, day and a half later, they, they had run a bunch of tests on her. Doctor comes in a day and a half later and says, oh, my God, yeah, you actually did have an infection in your pancreas. And thank God they were able to fix it and save her life. These, this is just one little example of many. But the bottom line is that there is clearly a realm that exceeds what your physical 3D human eyes can see. And that you can source energy to, give, to, to maximize your intuition to help improve your life and improve this world. Tesla did it. Einstein figured it out. Although Tesla, I think, had a, clearly had an edge on him on how he was able to utilize it. Anyways, guys, I'll close up there. I'm Jimmy. This is Bright Insight. Like and subscribe. Help me spread the message. I have many other videos on a whole wide variety of topics. Take care, everybody.